We'll begin senior night with girls cross country. First up, Haley Fuller. Haley is escorted by Rebecca McDaniel and Kenny Fuller. She's been a member of the cross country team for four years and she is undecided on her college and major. Our next athlete, Deanna Hall, escorted by Crystal and Nathan Hall. Four years of cross country and she is also undecided on her college and major. Our next athlete, McKenna Panel, escorted by Abby and Rock Panel. Four years of cross country and also undecided on their major. Next up we have boys cross country, Zach Kincaid. Zach is escorted by John Kincaid and Dick and Christy Skettle. Zach participated in four years of cross country, plans to attend Marshall University and major in business administration. Next athlete is Jake Marshall. Jake is escorted by Niles and Heidi Marshall. Four years of cross country, plans to attend Mount West Community and Technical College, majoring in physical therapy. Next up is our cheerleaders, Maddie Flynn. That's heard by Janet and Jason Flynn. Four years of cheerleading, and she plans to attend Ohio University and wants to be a pediatric nurse. Next up, Chelsea Graham, escorted by Jamie and Chad Graham. Four years of cheerleading and wants to attend Marshall University with the nursing major. Next up is Ebony Howe. Ebony is escorted by Charity Howe, Sierra Howe, Coco Prishan, and Ashanti Valentine. Two years of cheerleading, plans to attend Ohio University or go to the Air Force. Our next athlete, Madison Nybert. Escorted by Tom and Angie Nybert. Madison's been a cheerleader for four years and plans on attending Marshall University, majoring in accounting and economics. Our last cheerleader, Miss Olivia Roberts. Escorted by Jim and Lisa Roberts. Olivia has been a cheerleader for four years and also a member of the golf team for four years. She plans to go to attend Marshall University, majoring in elementary education and speech pathology. And now for the football team. Senior Joel Lambert. Joel is escorted by Joe and Nikki Lam Lam Joel Lambiot, I'm sorry. Joel is escorted by Joe and Nikki Lambiot and sister McKenzie Lambiot. Four years of football. His college is undecided, but he wants to major in biomedical science. Robbie McFarland. Escorted by Sam and Chris Spurlock, sisters Brooks Spurlock and Felicia McFarland. Two years of football. College is unknown. He wants to be a pharmacist. Our next athlete, Zeke Ramey. Escorted by Katie Chianessi and Josh Petrie. Four years of football. Zeke wants to attend the University of Charleston and study nursing. The next athlete, Josh Brewer. Sister Brianna Brewer and brother Nathaniel Brewer and Hunter Brewer. One year of football. He wants to go to Akron and do construction manufacturing. Tucker Atkins. Escorted by Lynn and Bill Atkins. One year of football. Wants to go to work as an electrician. Next up is Tyler Benson, escorted by Crystal Wells. One year of football, major unknown. Next athlete is Seth McLean, escorted by Kathy and Jeff McLean. Four years of football. Wants to go to University of Cincinnati and major in business. And our last athlete of the evening, Jacob Rankin. Escorted by Tanya and Craig Rankin and sister Maggie Rankin. Four years of football and he's undecided on where he wants to attend college. Welcome to the night's Friday night special, home of the Fairland Dragons. We're going to be playing the Cold Grove Hornets. We have two four and four teams vying for the OBC position here tonight. They're both two and three in the OBC. We're looking forward to a good competitive game, Charlie. Yes, we are. Looks like the Dragons are set to get the ball first. We have Gavin Hunt deep for the Dragons. Brennan West and Michael Stitt as well. The Dragons at the home field, all green uniforms. 
It's senior night here in Proctorville, Ohio. This is a little different look now. You, I didn't see the Dragons play Portsmouth last week, but on kickoff returns last week, did they have one man deep? Because normally they have two men deep. They have two men deep. I think this might be the first time that I recognize them having single man deep. We'll have to see if it's uh, has something to do with Cole Grove's kicker. Maybe he has a strong leg and he kicks right down the middle. We'll have to wait and see. If you lost an iPhone, kicker is number two. Your Evan one. Holmes for the Hornets. And the whistle. Get ready to begin this evening. Kick off deep. Looks like Hunt's going to catch it in the air. At the, at the five. Down the field. He's got a lane. And he gets Ooh. stopped by number yeah, 32. Number 32, Ethan Short on the tackle for the Hornets. Dragons start up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Lambiot coming onto the field to lead the Dragons. He's the senior quarterback. Thrown for around 1,600 yards so far this season. Shooting for 2,000 on the year, Charlie. He's been a three-year starter and almost played his, uh, a lot his freshman year as well. His senior leadership is going to be the different slide if the Dragons are going to pull out the win. Dragons break the huddle with twins left, single wide right, king formation, whistle. Maybe we weren't set for play yet. Dragon's getting a little bit eager to hike that ball. We'll let the referees get the ball set and get ready set for play. What do you think the key tonight is for the Fairland Dragons, Charlie? Well, based on <clears throat> based on what I've seen history-wise between the, with the Cold Grove Hornets, is is the Dragons going to have to stop the run? Um, I haven't seen the Hornets yet this year, but they usually bring a big bruising running back. And for the for the Hornets, they're going to have to stop exactly that. The options that the Dragons run. Is it run? Is it pass? Michael Sid on the carry for two yards. It'll bring up second down and eight yards for the Fairland Dragons. Coach Cunningham getting the play in to Lambiot. You know, I've noticed <clears throat> most of the season – and I think it's a matchup. I think it's because of the matchup. It seems like every game, Lambiot has one of the wide receivers that he, he constantly targets. stitt has got a big hole. He's going to have a first down. He's going to get a big block. Got the block. Looks like he's going to pick up around about 20, 18 to 20 yards. It's going to be first down for the Dragons on their own 49-yard line. Good game by the junior running back. 15-yard game, first down. Dragons line up quickly. Same formation. Hand off to Sit. Fighting for about four yards. Maybe five. Devin Holmes on the tackle for the Hornets. Friday night. At a football stadium is my favorite place to be, Charlie. No other place I'd rather be. Mm -hmm. Holmes lining up top. Looks like he's going to show some pressure from the outside linebacker position. Looks like Freeland's checking the play that was called based on the defensive lineup of the Hornets. And we're going to call a timeout. So with 10.23 left to go in the first quarter, the Dragons moving the ball. We're going to take a timeout. You're watching Armstrong Sports. And we're back. Maryland set to take the play at second down and five on the Hornets 45-yard line coming out of the timeout. Celebratory senior night tonight. Shotgun snap, Lambie out with the keep. He's not going to get much. Matter of fact, he got zero yards, may have lost half a yard. It's going to bring third down and five or a short six. Brought down by the Hornets number 56, it looks like. Justin Castle. This is a little different than what we've seen from the Dragons this season. Every play so far has been a running play. Uh, I suspect we'll see 
some type of pass, maybe a wide receiver screen or something here. Little air out the ball. Mm -hmm. The Drags have been known to uh, be a passing team this year. It's been a strength of their, their season. Lambiot gets a snap. Here's the, he's, Gavin Hunt's wide open. This is six. Touchdown, Dragons. 45 yard touchdown pass from Lambiot to Gavin Hunt. That's blown coverage by the secondary of the Hornets, Charlie. They have the uh, ball thrown, easy catch. Sometimes those are the hardest ones to catch, those easy balls. Looked like it was a drop. Safety was supposed to drop back in coverage, and he, he bit on the fake. Wide open down the field. Bruce back for the extra point. Hunt will be the holder. And a snap. Looks like that's going to be good. And with nine minutes and 27 seconds left in the first quarter, your Freeland Dragons take the lead, seven to nothing. You're watching Armstrong Sports. Alex Bruce sets the kickoff for the Freeland Dragons. Two men back deep for the Hornets. Number 12, Kyle Seitz, and it looks like possibly, can't make that number out on the far side, Charlie. Looks like maybe an eight. 18, maybe. I will say 18, Christian Workman. That's a running back. Looks like that'd be a good choice. Or number eight, maybe. Yep. He picks up the ball. Got a nice low return. And he gets tackled at the 30-yard line where the Hornets mm -hmm. will take over first and 10 on their own 30. Well, Charlie, here's been the uh, kind of the uh, touchy part of the football team for the Dragons is this defense. Mm -hmm. We can put the points up, but sometimes it seems like uh, we give up a little bit more than what we can put on the board. So they're going to have to tighten up a little bit this week. They're off to a good start with the lead. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll make them a little bit comfortable and they'll be able to play a, a more complete game this week. Well, it looks like they're expecting run. They're setting up in a five. Five-two with the monster safety coming up. Mm -hmm. Man on man on the outside. We've got a little wide receiver screen. McFarland comes up, makes a tackle. No gain. It'll be second down and 10 for the Hornets. Catch was made by number 23, Aaron Music, for the Hornets. That ball is a little better thrown ball. He might have had a chance to do something. No gain on the play. We've got second down and 10 for the Hornets. Nate Harmon. The quarterback for the Hornets, that's who the return man was on the last <coughs> kickoff. It wasn't 18, it was actually number eight, Nate Harmon. Sit back, gets a shotgun pass. Hand off to number, he's keeping it up the middle and he gets tackled right at the line of scrimmage by number 66 oh, of your Fairland yes. Dragons, Jacob Rankin. It's gonna bring up third down and a long nine for the Cold Grove Hornets. Down by 66, Jacob Rankin. No game on the play, the third down team for the Hornets. Harmon looks like he, uh, he's a pretty uh, solid kid, good size on him, so he will probably run the ball a few times on that quarterback draw. And he's set back with the shotgun, he's rolling to his right. He's got a guy wide open in the deep, but he blows through his hands, a little bit of contact. It's going to be incomplete, It'll be fourth down, and the Hornets going to be having to punt. That's a pretty good series overall for the Fairland Dragons defense. But return team coming on the field. Man, a bunch of substitutions there, Charlie. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can substitute seven men in, seven men out. Just a little bit of extra playing time for those younger players that's worked hard all week. Little reward for them. You got Hunt back, Hunt back deep for the Dragons around his own 32, 33 yard line. Good snap, punt, kick it. End over end, bounce, Hunt lets it go. It's going to end up being a good punt, Charlie. Going down all the way down to the 14, so we're going to have a, oh, about a 30, 40, about a 53, 54 yard punt for thing, the Hornets. Thing looked like, looked like it rolled about 25 yards. The senior Joe would let me up, lead his Freeland Dragons onto their second offensive series. We have seven minutes and 51 seconds left in the first quarter. I'll be interested to see what the Dragons do when they come out. You gotta wonder if maybe they've seen something on film 
that leads them to believe that they're going to be able to run the ball successfully tonight against Cold Grove, uh, or, or if they're going to go back to more of a traditional what we've seen them do this year. We got trips right, single wide left with a single back. Coach Cunningham checking out the defense, calling the play. Shotgun snap. Mr. Lambiot right up the middle. He's going to have some room. He's got a lane. There goes Joe Lambiot, the senior. Dual threat. He's going to get brought down at the eight yard line. Big run by the quarterback. Seventy-seven yard run by your senior quarterback, Joel Lambiot. Be first and goal around the nine yard line, ten yard line. Good run, good blocking by the interior lineman. Not too bad with uh, seven thirty-five left in the first quarter, and you've probably got right. hundred yards team rushing. At I think they saw right? the numbers on the inside. They had a man on man inside, and that's all it took to bust through the hole. Mm -hmm. One little slip of a tackle, and there he goes. And off the set up the middle. He picked up around six, seven yards for the Dragons to be second and goal from the four. Six yard gain is up second. Dragons lining up on the ball quickly to get another snap off before the defense gets set. Lambie out with the keep, and he's going to slide into the end zone for a touchdown. That was a good read option play by Lambie out right there, Charlie. He saw the defensive end crash down. He knew he had a lane around the left side. He kept it and dove into the end zone for a touchdown. Another smart play by your senior quarterback. Good decision. Alec Bruce back to kick the extra point for Fairland. Ball's in the air. It's good. So with seven minutes and two seconds left in the first quarter, Brown Dragons 14, Cold War Hornets 0. You're watching Armstrong. Alec Bruce, back deep. Kick off for the Dragons. Bruce has just gotten, for a freshman, you can, you can just watch all year. He's just gotten better and better and better and better. And he's going, he is going to be a really valuable asset for the Dragons as he kicks it out of bounds. So. That's the way it always goes, Charlie. <laughs> that's You're right. On that's right. A little bit, yeah. and they'll say, I'll show you. That's right. I can still make a freshman mistake and kick it that's out of right. bounds. But he's going to be a, a really valuable asset the next three years for the Dragons. The Cold Grove Hornets offense comes back onto the field. They'll set up first and 10 on the, I think, the 35-yard line after they assess the penalty. It's either the 35 or 40. I can't remember, Charlie. We had this discussion a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It's an automatic mark. It's not from where the ball went out of bounds. So the referees are getting this worked out. Mark take over first and 10, the ball on the run, 35-yard line. 35-yard line, as we expected. Ball placed in the middle of the field. We're in a bingo offense. It's wide left for Cole Grove. Rock right. Full back up the middle. Stable and ball carry. Looks like Zane Tucker, number 70, on the tackle of the Fairland Dragons. That is a big body fullback right there. I can't think call that heavy load or wide load. I think you called either one. You usually got to have a uh, couple extra trucks leading you and following you if you got a wide load like that. I'm trying to get a good, good look. Hard run. I'm trying to get, to get a good look at it. Full back up the middle again. He got wrapped up a little bit tighter that time. Looks like Rankin, Jacob Rankin for the Dragons, number 66. Pick up about two yards for the Hornets. One yard game brings up third down and two for the Hornets. It's like a. Uh, 34? No. Nope. Dylan goes 34 and he's only listed for 150. That boy goes 250. <laughs> Number 30, at Austin Stapleton. He's two, 220. 220. There you go. 5 foot 10, 220. That'd yep. be close like it. Yep. 
Here's an impressive though, he's a sophomore. That's a big boy. Yes, it is. Pull back up the nope, quarterback keep up the Call middle. The he's gonna get enough for a first down, pick up about six yards, gonna be at the 50 yard line. Looks like the Dragons were looking right, towards the fullback again. Mm-hmm. And Harmon kept it. The got the necessary yardage needed to keep their offense on the field. You can pick up another first down, try to get some momentum swinging back to third favor. This is a little bit more offense of what I thought we were going to see from Cole Grove. Not what we saw in the first series, but. I agree with you. Sites with the carry. Dragon players are motioning like a fumble, but they're going to call him down. It's going to be second down and seven for the Hornets. Pick up about three. Gain of two brings up second down and eight. Dragons defense is playing with a lot of energy tonight, Charlie. I don't know if that 14 point jump on him has gotten a little bit excited, a little bit of extra energy. We've got a little smaller defensive tackle in there too, maybe trying to get a little bit of quickness in through there and pile up. Ooh, nice forearm. Ended up getting tackled by number 62. 62. It? That's going to be Blaine Kermine. He's Blaine's wearing a different number this week than we normally well, see him in. So that's Blaine Kermines for the Dragons. He's usually wearing number 26, but he reversed it and went 62 four. this week. I'm going to assume they're looking at him to play on the line a little bit on the offensive side, perhaps, since he used a higher number. Twins. No, we got single wide right. Little rock formation. Give it to fullback up the middle, number 30. Going to get tackled for about a two to three yard gain. It's going to be about third down, down and two for the Hornets. That's number 30, Austin Stapleton on the carry. By the line. Caleb Mullins in there on the tackle. He's wearing 50. fourth down and two. Excuse me, I thought it was third. I'm yeah. sorry. Fourth down and two for the Hornets. On their side of the 50, down 14 and nothing. The way the Dragons have scored the last two possessions. Yeah, I'm going forward here. I think this is a good decision by the Hornets. They line up twins left, single wide right. Quarterback keep. He's getting held. No call. He's going to get There's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, there it is. Get knocked out of bounds. It's going to be first down for the Dragons. They'll take over after they decline the penalty. They'll have the ball around the 43 yard line. That was number 52. I think that was Caleb Mullins getting held by the Dragons. I think he saw, I think the official saw it right away. He was having a hard time finding this flag. That could be the case. Holding against the Hornets. So the Dragons defense holds once again, Charlie, and they take over at the 42-yard line, trying to really take control of this game if they can drive down and get another touchdown on the board before the end of the first quarter. Offensive explosion so far for the Dragons. It has been, nothing, you know, several big Two plays. Two big plays, 50-yard yeah. pass, a 75-yard run. Mm -hmm. Quick scores. Lambiot brings the play into the huddle. Taking the time, breaking the huddle. Coming out 13 on the play clock. We're going to have twins left, twins right, single back stit. Shotgun formation. Kogro's going man on man. 2 right 1. Here, Yep. With a safety spy on the quarterback. Got a timeout again. Safety spy quarterback. We're not going to let Lambiot have that long run anymore. Yep. So we're going to have to beat the DBs one on one. And with three minutes and 43 seconds, Fairland Dragons call a timeout. That's their second on the half. We'll take a break too. You're watching Armstrong. And we're back. Dragons take the, take the first down snap at the 42 yard line. You can see a lot of energy on that green sideline right now, Charlie. A lot of excitement. A lot of positive things going on their side right now. Same formation as when we left. Fake off the stip. Up oh. the middle. Lambiot's going to take off. He's got room. There goes Lambiot with a nice little spin move to pick up a few extra yards. He's still pulling and tugging. He's going to pick up around 16 yards on the play. It'll be first and 10. Fairland Dragons at the 42-yard line of the Hornets. 
I really believe the official, if he, if he had seen it, he, he could have called holding. Uh, Zeke Ramey's going down the field. He's 10 yards down the field, and, and the defensive back grabs a hold of him and spins him around almost completely and takes him completely out of the play. We got, looks like we got a little bit of an time injury out. timeout here for Joe Lembiot. Must have a little bit of blood on the elbow. Got to get him out for a play. Going to bring J.D. Brumfield, it looks like, in for a play. Going to be a direct snap to one of the running backs. I wonder who's going to be Hunt, probably. Or Sowards. Hunter Sowards won't be the quarterback in the play, if I had to guess. Then again, you can make a liar out of me. It's going to be Brumfield. <laughs> And Brumfield gets up the middle. Looks like he's got a little bit of room. Runs over a man. Going to pick up around about 17 yards on the play. It's going to be first and 10 for Ellen Dragons. Direct snap to the freshman. First down. I'll do it. I'll do it again. <laughs> if you would have told me at the end of the first quarter the Dragons had more rushing yards than passing, I would have figured it would have been a 0-0 or a 7-0 game we're getting beat. Yeah. But we're moving the ball the opposite way tonight. And if it's working, don't stop. Keep it going. Keep pushing. The line's doing a good job opening the holes. The backs are finding them. Making a couple of moves, making people miss. Turning on the afterburners. Twins left, twins right. Lambiot, shotgun formation. Looks like he's looking for an open man. Sowards is going to catch it. Is he in? It'll be a little bit short by Zeke Ramey. Be down about at the two yard line. First and goal from the two for the Dragons. Two men in the same position usually, Charlie. If you have two receivers real close together like that, positive things don't usually end up from that. It's usually a pick or at least knock down, but it worked out well for the Dragons this time. Yep. That was a good play by Ramey. He, he went up and got that ball, so. That's a senior play for you. Zeke Ramey, 5'10", 160 pound senior for the Dragons. Stip, got a flag. flag on the play. I'm going to have a hold on the interior of the line. Holding against the Dragons. So that'll back the Dragons up 10 yards. It'll still be first and goal and still be first down. With the girls cross country and girls soccer team meet the Dragons this time. Girls couldn't tell exactly who it was that was holding there, Charlie, but it had to be one of the interior linemen because that's where the flag came towards. All right. I'm usually trying to look to see because usually one of the coaches is asking the official who was holding, and you can usually make it out, but I wasn't able to see that they even asked. Different formation here. Brumfield's open on the flat. He's going to drop mm. the ball. Too much well, green. Going to be incomplete pass. It'll be second complete. and goal from the 12. That was a good formation. That was a good play. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was... That was, that was tricky. That's the first time I've seen that this first year. Play, the first time I've seen that play. Brings up second down and goal from the 12. I like it. I bet that'll come back sometime this evening. Mm -hmm. That was a good little setup. They may even have something else out of that <laughs> here a little bit later. Mm. <clears throat> Missed opportunity there for the Dragons. Second and goal from the 12. Lambie out back in shotgun. Lambiot scoots in for the touchdown. 12-yard touchdown run for the Dragons. Bruce is on for the kick. Snaps up, the hold, the kick, it's going to be good. So with two minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the first quarter, you're failing Dragons, 21, Cold Grove, points, zero. You're watching Armstrong Sports. Alan Bruce, sent back to kick for the Dragons. Bruce back to kick for the Dragons. Sites and Harmon back deep for the Hornets.
Little dribbler kick. Try to find the hole. He's going to let it go out of bounds once again. So the Hornets will take over at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Hornets. Charlie, it's been a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. But we're sitting side by side out at Rock Hill. Yep. The Fairland Dragons led late in the first quarter, 21 to nothing. Everything going in their favor. Could not be stopped. Ball flying in the air, falling right in the receiver's hands. Everything was going the green and white way. It was like they took the foot off the gas pedal. It was. Kind of breathe. And what do we have near the end of the third quarter, early fourth? Dragons ah. was getting beat. So let's see if they can uh, keep the momentum going here. Hand off to uh, Stapleton up the middle. He's met hard by Kermit. And Kazee. If I'm remembering correctly from that game, Rock Hill was able to get back into that game. And I think I even made the comment, if they keep running the ball, um, this game's going to be over because they don't have enough time the way they were running the ball to get back into the game. You got that right. And then they started running the ball and uh, absolutely. Oh, good pass. That was a great good pass. pass. Good route by Harmon. He's going to be gone. Can Stitt catch him? Stitt's going to slow him down enough. McFarland's got the tackle. Good catch by Evan Holmes, senior running back for the Hornets. Pick up of about. 15, 30, about 42 yards for the Hornets. They'll take over first and 10 at the Dragon 23 yard line. Finally, something positive happening for the Hornets. Let's see how the Dragons defense responds. Harmon with the keep. Chase around the end, nice stiff arm. He's going to get driven out of bounds for a couple yard loss. That's a good play by Stitt. I believe it was Stitt over here. Was it Stitt or was it West? Stitt's on the far side, so it must have been West. We want to give him a yard gain on the play, okay? So it's going to be second down and nine for the Hornets. Trips right, single wide left, single back. Harmon back, shotgun, gets a snap, rolls to his right, looking for an open man. There he is in the middle, knocked Ooh. down. Closely, almost Harman's intercepted by Michael Stitt for the Dragons. Still Good play by the DB. Third down and eight for the Hornets. I'll tell you what, here's what I'm enjoying so far. I'm enjoying watching the foe, 24, down here on the line. Everything, everything that goes on during the play with him. He is he is pestering the daylights out of these offensive linemen. A lot of quickness right there. Out of Look at that speed right there on 24 getting through the line. Deep ball. Harmon just barely overthrows his man. Holmes. It's going to bring up fourth down and eight for the Hornets. I'm going to predict at some point either this half or if the Dragons continue to play the defense that they're playing right now there's going to be there's going to be a personal foul flag or an unsportsmanlike conduct flag because one of these linemen for Colgrove is going to lose their composure because the foe is pestering the daylights out of them. The foe's number 24, Brian Defoe. He's five foot eight, 150 pound junior defensive lineman. A little bit of a blitz from the outside. Brumfield's going to be there. To make a tackle on the sack on the quarterback, the Dragons will take over first and 10 on their own 38-yard line. With 24.2 seconds remaining and the Fairland Dragons up 21 to nothing, they'll be taking over first and 10 on their own 36-yard line. That was a good hold by the Fairland Dragon defense. Not very often you get to watch two freshman linebackers team up for a sack in high school football. Right. Was that Kazee with him? Kazee was with him. Good yep. job. Kazee and Brumfield. Riley Kazee and J.D. Brumfield. Looks like we'll have probably one more play before the end of the quarter. Dragon split two wide left, two wide right. Maybe out in the shotgun. 
Going to be stiff off to the left side. Going to show a little bit of his speed. Going to get a first down. And he slides down. It's about the 48-yard line. The first and 10 for the Dragons. We'll stop the clock. Move the chains. <clears throat> I don't think he went out of bounds. The clock should start after the change is set. Nope, they're going to mark him as out of bounds. So we'll have one more play in the quarter. Dragons break the huddle. We're going to have trips left. Single wide right. West is going to be one on one on his man. That guy's going to keep. He's going to slide down. Probably a loss of a half a yard, maybe a yard. It's going to bring up second down 11. And it's going to be the end of the first quarter. And we're going to flip the field and go the other direction. And that's the end of the first quarter. Your score, Fairland, So your score at the end of the first oh, quarter, you got the Fairland Dragons 21, your Cobra Hornet 0. You're watching Armstrong Sports Network. We come back to the second quarter. The second down 11 for the Dragons. Let me in a shotgun formation. Trips right. Bad snap. He picks it up. Still rolls to his left. Looking for an open man. He's going to have a little bit of a lane. He slips down for about a yard, maybe. It's going to be third down and 10 for the Dragons. Based on what we've seen, folks, so far, it looks like that between the 40s, it's pretty slick. Now we're getting that light drizzle coming down, maybe making it a little bit slicker. You can barely see a light drizzle that's out there right now. A couple of umbrellas up. It's going to get a little bit muddy out here, possibly. That can change the outlook on the game from a pass game to more of a run first type option. Congratulations, Joe. Third down and 10. Pass the hunt. It's going to be a first down. Nope, it's a hook and ladder. It's going to be enough for a first down. Pick up about 12 yards for the Dragons. It'll be first and 10 on their own 39 yard line. A little bit of a trickery play there, Charlie. Yep. Usually don't see a hook and ladder this early in the game. But the Hornets were ready for it. It was a good stop. I don't think we've seen that this year, so they just did a good job of picking up and reading it. They, they, they probably hadn't seen it on film. Stip towards the right side. Looks to make the cut. Stip Gets tackled the by Blaine Cremines of the Dragons. And <laughs> looks like... Uh, looks like number two. Eight yard game to play. Pretty seven yard game to play. Up second down three. Evan Holmes for the Hornets. Looks like his own man brought him down on that play, Charlie. Yeah. Been looking to Hunts. see where Kermines is set. He's set. Kermines is setting up a guard. Yeah. Okay. Hunt's down here. Uh, now he's getting a little bit of safety help. So he's man on man. I like my chances with him, with him against anybody man on man. Stick gets handoff. Going to roll forward for a pickup of about here. two yards. It's going to be third and one. Long one, short two. I guess it really it all comes down to what, what films have Cole, has Cole Grove seen. Because we've seen teams drop the safety over Sowards. We've seen teams drop the safety over Hunt. A lot of, lot of wide receiver weapons on this Dragon offense. And Zeke Ramey's had a good yeah, grab yeah. tonight. So let's pick your poison. West turned the shine here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Kevin Cyrus hasn't really gotten involved in the pass game much yet. Hand off. Nope, he kept it around the end. Lambiot's going to be a keeper. Be enough for a first down. Pick up about 12, 13 yards. Got a late flag. Maybe face mask. Late flag. See, it's hold up. See what the call is. Looks like nope. Coach Cunningham's pointing towards the other side. Yep, looks like it. Holding on the oh, face, face mask, mask. Hornets. That'll be a uh, personal mask. foul. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal from the 18, 19 yard line. But the ball, it's about the eight or nine yard line. First and goal for the Dragons. That run right there will put Lambiot over 100 for the day. Oh, easy. <clears throat> Who would have thought he'd had more running yards than passing yards yeah. in the first quarter? Mm -hmm. Two half a distance to the goal. The Dragons, first down. <laughs> First and goal for the Dragons. Right inside the 10 yard line. Hunt up top by himself, man on man. Twins left. 
Pogrove comes up to Lambiot's going to keep it. Slides a little bit. Falls forward for a yard or two. It's going to be second down and about, eh, about the nine. Second and goal from the nine for the Dragons. Looks like they're bringing the full back out and putting another wide out back in the game. Going to go four wide this play, Charlie. Another game on the play brings up second down and nine. Sometimes it's easier to run when you spread out the defense. So they're going to go four wide for the Dragons. Sirens Hunt and Ramey up top, West down below. Snap. Lambert rolls to his right. Another flag, flag down. And Lambert throws a pick. Intercepted at about the five yard line, and he returns it all the way to the 20, around the 20 yard line. But we have a flag on the play. We'll see what, what the flag's all about. It's in the area of holding for the Dragons. So I believe Colgrove will get to keep the ball. I think Lambiot tried to force that ball in there, Charlie. Holding it to Dragons, refused, wanted to take over. And the Horns will take over after the holding call against Fairland is declined. It'll be first and 10 for the Hornets at around the 19 yard line. Charlie, that is a play that Colgrove desperately, desperately needed to make. Well, I, I think that was Fairland's opportunity and hopefully they'll have another opportunity. Defense can step up. Fairland's opportunity to put a statement in the first half. And it looks like Colgrove's gonna go right back to their bread and butter. Power line up, right up the middle. There he goes. Best and free. Tackle by Lambiot at the 42 yard line. That's not until a 24 yard pickup by number 30, Austin Stapleton of the Hornets. That's the power game we're used to seeing out of the Hornets, Charlie. Kyle sights the ball carrier, picks up around five yards, tackled by J.D. Brumfield. He's second down in five for the Hornets on their own 49-yard line. Harmon breaks the huddle. Going under center for this snap. And off. Stapleton's about to break one, gets tackled, picks up of about 15 yards again. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets on the Dragons' 37-yard line. I've been waiting for this right here, Charlie. This is the Cobra football that we're used to seeing, power football. Man on man, we're bigger and stronger than you. Try to stop us. First driver team, they were getting a little bit too much finesse in my opinion. And off to Stapleton again around the left end. Met by a host of Dragons. Pick up about two yards, maybe three. It's going to be second down and seven for the Hornets. I'm starting to think that there's a some kind of tree over in Cole Grove somewhere that I haven't seen it that grows big running backs. Because <laughs> every year, Cole Grove has a Big, Just powerful, a big back. powerful back. Sights on, Sights the, on carry. the carry. Gonna pick up about four yards. Gonna be third down and three for the Hornets. Looks like maybe Kazee was on that tackle for the Dragons. Cogrove breaks the huddle. Key down and play right here for the Hornets. Snap. Stepping up the middle. He's going to have enough. It's going to be a first down around the 24-yard line for the Hornets.
Kogros string together a nice drive here. A much needed drive to give their defense a break. And they got to get some points on the board before half. Well, it looks like uh, 73 Anders has come in. It's the first time I think he's been in on defense, but it looks like they're bring, trying to bring a little bit more meat down into the line. We got a little bit of an overload left. Harmon keeping it up the middle. Harmon on the keeper. Picks up about five yards. <laughs> Second down and five down for the Cold Grove Hornets. Six minutes to play in the second quarter. Little drizzle still continuing and a cool sweatshirt kind of a night on Friday night, senior night for the Dragons. Stapleton up the middle. It's going to pick up about three yards. It's going to be about third down and three from the 16-yard line. Brought down to the whole interior line of the Fairland Dragons. Grameens, Andrus, Mullins. Well, takes more than one man to bring that load down. Well, it, it looks to me like if they're going off, off behind in the center, either way, you know, they, they can't pick much up, but they've been, have been successful running outside of the guards with the fullback. That'll be a first down run. Sights on the carry. Enough for a first down. It's going to be first down and 10 around. It's going to be first and goal. I don't think they're going to have enough for a first down. Maybe they will. The stakes are still up, so they must just barely have enough room for a first down. Nope, now they're calling it first and goal. First and goal for the Hornets. Sights up the middle. It's going to be in for a touchdown. Ten-yard run for the Cold Grove Hornets for a touchdown. It's a big score before the, end, before the half comes. Extra point attempt coming up. Getting a little bit more, a little bit more rain coming down. It's not not super heavy, but it's enough to make the field a little soft. Might spring a little bit of life back into that. Uh, Cold Grove Hornet team on the other sideline. A little bit different formation here for you, Charlie. Now we're sliding back over to our normal, more functioning field goal attempt formation. Delay. Flag on the play. Got a flag down. Back judge, it's usually delay. Mm -hmm. Possibly legal snap. False, like false start. Hornets. Ball start. Hmm. Legal snap, I would say. Looks like he touched the ball, turned it to flip it, then he turned it back to hike it. He kicks up and it's good. With four minutes and 47 seconds to go in the second quarter, it's your Fairland Dragons 21, Cobra of Hornets 7. You're watching Armstrong Sports. Hunt's back deep for the Dragons on the return. Holmes set the kickoff for the Hornets. 21-7 ball game with 4.47 left to go in the second quarter. Slight drizzle coming down, kickoff. Hunt at his 10. Has a little bit of a lane. If he can break the corner, he gets knocked down around the 39-yard line. That's where the Dragons will take over first and 10. Around the 38, 39-yard line. They're bringing it back to about the 34-yard line. He must have stepped out a little bit there. Yep, we're moving it back to the 38-yard line. Back and forth, zigzaggy there, little Charlie. Couldn't make up a mind where we wanted to put the ball. They're going to give you the 37. <laughs> They're going to split the difference. I guess. Dragons break the huddle. West, jet sweep. Oh, Brandon West is going to have some room. Going to get brought down. 
by Holmes, but not after he picks up around 35 yards for the Dragons. Be first and 10 for the Fairland Dragons at around the 30-yard line. That's a big play to give up after you just scored to bring some momentum back to your team, Charlie. That's the first jet sprint we've seen for the day, too. Yep. Dragons break the huddle. It's going to be a fake the West on the jet. We're going to hand it up the middle to Brumfield. The stiff. The stiff falls down. Doesn't pick up any yardage. I can call a play too, Charlie, before it happens. Sometimes. I've seen the offense a time or two. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Dragons at the 30 yard line. It just kind of got out there and scooby doo a little bit. I guess he got caught up and there's maybe a little, little bit of mud right there slippy. where he was going to. Yeah. Rain starting to come down a little bit, mm -hmm. making it feel just a little bit slicker than what it was earlier in the night. A little screen pass inside to Gavin Hunt. He's going to have a little bit of a lane, good lane. Well, Men getting out there. It's going to be close to a first down, if not a first down. Looks like it's going to be. I believe it is. Uh, just a little bit shy of a first down, perhaps. Well, That's good inside screen. It's down. going to be a first there down. Go. Good pitch and catch by the Dragons. That's the first wide receiver screen we've seen tonight, isn't it? Yep. Sure is. You know, the athletic director here at Fairland, Jeff Gorby, he's done a good job of trying to keep this grass field playable with all the soccer games and football games and junior high games and youth football games. It's not an easy task. There's not too many fields in Lawrence County with grass as the playing surface anymore. That's Michael Stipp with pick up of about 15 yards. It's going to be first down and goal from the four-yard line or six-yard line for the Dragons. He puts in a lot of time, a lot of speed. Free time. It's not pay time. It's free yeah. time he puts in extra fertilizer and keeping the field in the shape that it is. We've got a lot of good volunteers to help spray paint the field to make it look the way it does, too. The coaches put in hard work as well, and we appreciate all of it. Trips left, single wide right. Shotgun snap. Lambout's going to keep it. It's going to bust up the middle. It's going to be short. It's going to fall down about the two-yard line. It's going to be got a flag. second goal from the two with the flag on the play. Do you see anything, Charlie, what that could have been? Uh, the only thing I come up with maybe helmet to helmet. Holding against the Dragons. Nope. Got one of the big uglies with a hold of the jersey. It's going to bring him back 10 yards. The first and goal from around the 14-yard line. Now, what the Dragons have to do, Mr. Lambiot has to show his senior leadership here, take care of the football, mm -hmm. make smart decisions, try to get the ball into the end zone. If you can't get it in the end zone, do your best to get it in a position where you can kick that extra, you can kick that field goal and take a 17-point lead here before half. Mm -hmm. Dragon set up first and goal from the 15. It's first and goal from the 15. Trips right, single wide left. West over the wet, left side by himself. It's going to be a little screen inside screen to Sowards. He has a little bit of lane. He's going to try to make a move to the outside. He's going to pick up about five yeah, yards, maybe six. It's going to be second and goal from the nine. I believe that's the first time we've got Sowards involved in the uh, in the game. Well, I can tell you this. It's the first time I saw that play. He had mm -hmm. men on both sides available for a screen pass. Yep. I'd always I'd only seen one outlet, but there was two outlets. Mm -hmm. Stitt was on the bottom side. Sowards on the top. Either one of them could have got that little slip screen pass. Yep. We have trips left, single wide right. Colgrove brings four men to cover three. That means you have numbers in the middle of the field if the quarterback wants to keep it. He's going to lob it to Ramey. Zeke's caught it. That's going to be six. Touchdown, Dragons. Joe Lemiot to the senior, Zeke Ramey, number 14 for the Dragons. Senior to senior connection. Good score before half. The Dragons look to kick the extra point. Bruce on. Lambiot threw that ball right into the back of the end zone where only his man can make the catch. And that was a good senior move right there. Bruce on for the kick. It's up. Looks good. With two minutes and 16 seconds remaining, you're going to have a score of the Fairland Dragons 28, Cobra Road Hornets 7. You're watching Armstrong score. Bruce 
it. Harmon in sights back deep for the Hornets. It's going to be Harmon. <laughs> Picking the ball up around the 15 yard line. Looks like he's going to get tackled by. A couple of dragons over there. Numbers are getting mixed up. So it's hard to tell who it was. I've got him as soon as I can see. That's Hudson. Casey Hudson. Yep, Casey Hudson on the tackle for the Dragons. Hornets take over first down and 10 on their own 33 yard line with two minutes and one second remaining. Hornets set up first and 10, the ball on their own 32 yard line. Critical possession for the Hornets, in my opinion, Charlie. They need to try to get down the field quick and put some points back up on the board. Well, we're going to see here what the uh, Dragon coaches, they were, pretty, they were pretty tore up after that last Cold Grove drive. See if they made that adjustment that they needed to make to. Yeah. Oh, Stapleton met right up the middle. Brought down by Ramey. Looks like Ramey made a big tackle. No middle linebacker there, number 14. Lines. Picked up about one yard. We're going second down and nine for the Hornets. I don't think we'll be able to run it down the field. We'll get there in time, Charlie. They want to put it in the air a little bit. We've got a minute mm -hmm. 36 remaining. Fox running as we get ready to hike the ball. Number 12, Mr. Seitz on the carry. He's going to pick up about five yards. It's going to be third down and four for the Hornets. Brought down by Andrews. We got timeout, Colgrove. Timeout, Colgrove. With a minute and 18 seconds remaining, and the score, 28 to 7, we'll take a timeout. And we're back. Colgrove breaks the huddle. Third down and three. Stapleton up the middle, he gets met. He's fighting, picks up maybe a yard, maybe two. It's going to be fourth down. Decision time for the Hornets. One and a half for the Hornets. Uh, letting the clock run. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Mm. No, that's not what my obvious thing to do was. <laughs> no. But anyways, it's fourth and one, and they're going to go for it. Stapleton. Gets hit. It's going to be close. I'm telling you, it is going to be close. It is going to be close. We got time. 44 seconds left. They're yeah. going to give it to him. It's going to be first and ten for the Hornets. Hey, second On their effort. Own 44. Second effort got that. Nevertheless, the clock's going to start as soon as the chains are set. Nope. What, what are they doing? Time out. Okay, the refs now going to officially say it's a first down. So we're going to move the chains now. Colgrove sitting over top of the ball so they can get it hiked as soon as the chains are set. The clock's in rolling position. The clock's in rolling position. The clock's in rolling position. And we're hiking it. No pitch and catch. Brumfield knocks him out of bounds. After pick up about nine yards. Maybe 10. We're going to call it second down. We're going to give it a first down, so 10 yard catch. It'll be first and 10 on the Dragons' 47 yard line. We got tripped right, single wide left. The guy lines up off sides, and he don't mm -hmm. call it. Good catch. Mm -hmm. Fox is going to continue to run. It'll be first and 10 on the 35 yard line. 25 seconds, plus the clock stop. Oh, chains move, chains first move. down, okay. 25 seconds, first down, Range chains are set. Range picking Wind up. Wind the rod, Range. it's winding. Range picking up just a little bit. Clock's ticking. Looks like they're gonna go deep down the middle this time. It's deep. Lame got's back here. Nope. Incomplete. Oh, the clock's got stopped. Seconds remaining in the second quarter. We're going to have second down in 10 for the Hornets. I'm surprised he chucked that ball down the field. He had a he had a nice lane to pull that ball down and take off. Probably picked up 30, 35 yards. 
Twins right, twins left. Single back, on the back, shotgun. This might be the last play of the quarter. Ramey on the chase. Tackled by the field monster. I believe it's intercepted. It doesn't matter what it is, because it's the end of the half. And at the end of the half, your score is your Freeland Dragons 28 and your Cold War Hornet 7. Got and we have a late penalty. We'll figure that out at the beginning of the second half. You're watching on Strong Sports. As part of our fans' tradition each year at our last home game, we take the time to recognize our graduating seniors and their parents. This year, we honor 26 members of the class of 2019. They are in alphabetical order. Katrina Abbott. Katrina is the daughter of Chuck and Teresa Abbott. She plays flute. She's participated in concert band seven years, major at four years, quiz ball two years, state science fair and math club three years, theta club two years. Katrina plans to attend The Ohio State University, majoring in international business. Hunter Atkins. Hunter is the son of Angela and Randy Stevenson. He plays trumpet and has participated in marching band, six years, concert band, seven years, all county band, three years, solo ensemble, one year, Spanish club, one year. He plans to attend Moorhead State University, majoring in the physical sciences. Samir Atai, he is the son of Bashar and Jennifer Atai. Samir plays alto and baritone sax and has participated in marching band, four years, Concert band, seven years. The Ohio State Honor Band and Ohio University Honor Band, three years each. The EMU Honor Band, one year. All County Band, five years. All District Band, one year. Math Club, four years and current president. Tri-M and current secretary. Quiz Ball, two years. Samir plans to attend the Ohio State University, majoring in biology and plans to become a physician. A.J. Blatt. AJ is the son of Beverly Kiefer and Andy Blatt. He plays trumpet and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band five years, all county band four years, all district band two years, and plans to audition again this year. AJ plans to attend the Ohio State University to study biological sciences. Isabella Carroll. Isabella is the daughter of Dave Carroll. She plays flute and has been a member of concert band seven years, marching band six years, major at four years, math club three years and current vice president, beta club and has been the recipient of exemplary character award three years. Isabella has already been accepted into the Moorhead State University uh, pre-veterinarian pre medicine program. Adriana Clagg. She is the daughter of Jason and Jocelyn Clagg. Adriana plays clarinet and has participated in marching band for six years, for which she was a co-section leader. Concert band, seven years. All county band, five years. All district band, three years. Quiz ball, three years. Tri-M and current treasurer. Beta club, two years each. Adriana plans to attend the Ohio State University, majoring in English. Skylar Cleary. He is the son of Julie Cleary and Ron Cleary. Skylar plays trombone and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, all county band three years, Marshall University Honors Band three years, solo ensemble two years, Tri-Am two years, section leader one year. He plans to attend Ohio University majoring in science and social studies education as well as becoming a member of the campus Air Force ROTC. Sebastian Davies. Sebastian is the son of Todd, Todd and Elizabeth Davies. He plays euphonium and has participated in All County Band four years, OU Honor Band two years, solo and ensemble four years, marching band four years, OU Summer Music Camp, MU Honors Band, Tri-M two years, Sebastian plans to attend North Texas University. Jonathan Elliott. 
He is the son of John Elliott and Kim and Patrick Frazier. Jonathan plays euphonium and has participated in Triumph for three years and is current historian. Marching band, six years. Concert band, seven years. All county band, four years. All district band, two years. OU honor band, two years. Martial honor band, one year. Varsity vocals, two years. Musical production, three years. Jazz band, one year. Jonathan plans to enlist in the United States Air Force to play in the Air Force Band, and he then plans to obtain a degree in music education. Jenna Eubanks. Jenna is the daughter of Deborah Neal and Brian Eubanks. She plays clarinet and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, three years as section leader, all county band five years, solo and ensemble five years, state and district science fair two years, varsity vocals three years, Buckeye Science and Engineering Fair one year. Jenna plans to attend college majoring in pre-med or biological science in order to become a forensic pathologist. Scotty Farrell. Scotty is the son of Heather and Scott Farrell. He plays saxophone and has participated in the Tri-Am Music Honorary for two years, math club three years, concert band seven years, marching band six years, solo and ensemble five years, all county five years, all district three years, OU Honors Band three years, OSU and Marshall Honor Band three years. Scotty plans to attend college and study actuarial science. Caleb Forrest. Caleb is the son of Adam and Tracy Forrest. He plays trumpet and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years. He's the current section leader and soloist, all county five years. All district three years. The Ohio State University Honors Band for two years. The Greater Huntington Symphonic Band, Tri-Am Math Club, FHS Newscasting Team, Spanish Club. Kayla plans to attend the Ohio State University, majoring in geoscience and paleontology. Hayden Galloway. She is the daughter of Lisa and Rick Galloway. Hayden plays trumpet and horn and has participated in concert band for seven years. Black Corps one year, marching band five years, Tri-M two years, and she plans to attend Marshall University to study forensic science. Nicole Haugen. Nicole is the daughter of Wally and Carol Haugen. She plays bassoon and has participated in majorette four years, concert band seven years, FCCLA one year, Spanish club one year. She plans to attend Ashland Community and Technical College to study nursing. <laughs> Seth Least, he is the son of Sarah Parks and Andrew Least. He plays euphonium and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band five years, all county band and first chair two years, all district band one year, Ohio University Honors Band two years, Ohio State University Honors Band one year. He plans to attend Ohio University, majoring in astrophysics. Caleb Kretzer. Caleb is the son of Tim and Marilyn Kretzer. He is a percussionist and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, all county band four years, all district band three years, Marshall University Honor Band three years. Caleb has already listed in the United States Marine Corps and will leave for boot camp in June 2019. Cassandra Metzger. She is the daughter of Rick and Ricardo Dillon. Cassandra plays flute and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band four years, choir one year, Farsi vocals three years, Spanish club two years, student council and triam. She plans to attend Ohio University majoring in German. Cameron Midkiff. Cameron is the son of Chad and Stephanie Midkiff. He plays trumpet and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, all county band five years, all district band three years, math club four years, Spanish club, student council, and solo and ensemble one year each. Cameron plans to attend University of Cincinnati, majoring in business marketing. Braden Newman. Braden is the son of Layla McClintock and Todd Newman. He has participated, he's a percussionist, and has participated in marching band 
four years, concert band, seven years, section leader, two years. He is a member of the Rum Junior Volunteer Fire Department and has participated in Spanish Club for one year. He plans to attend Marshall University, majoring in civil engineering. Cassie Peters. Cassie is the daughter of Davey Peters and Jesse Bowen Peters. She plays trumpet and has participated in concert band, seven years, marching band, six years, math club, three years, FCCLA, two years, and is current president, prom committee, two years, current vice president, Spanish club, one year. Cassie plans to study nursing after graduation. Kaylee Rummel. Kaylee is the daughter of Wayne and Candace Rummel. She plays flute and piccolo. She has participated in 16 honor bands, as well as concert bands, seven years, marching band, six years, section leader, four years, solo ensemble, six years, triumph, two years, and is current president, varsity vocals, three years, quiz ball, four years. Kaylee plans to attend Ohio University, majoring in instrumental performance and music education. Katie Walters. Katie is the daughter of Jeremy and Michelle Walters. Katie plays saxophone and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, FCCLA two years, prom committee one year, and choir one year. Katie plans to attend college majoring in middle childhood education with a minor in psychology. Pam Williams. Pam is the daughter of Leslie and Alan Webb and the late Michael Williams. She plays clarinet and has participated in concert band seven years, marching band six years, flag corps four years, all county band five years, triumph two years, and the tri currently the triumph vice president. Pam plans to attend Moorhead State University, majoring in early childhood education. Casey Wright. She is the daughter of Jason Wright and Chrissy Wright. Casey plays clarinet and has been involved in concert band seven years, marching band five years, triumph two years, choir two years, varsity vocal one year, Spanish club one year. Casey plans to attend Ohio University, majoring in meteorology. Jillian Vick. Jillian is the daughter of Tracy Wells and Marcus Bailey. She plays trumpet and has been involved in concert band seven years. Marching band six years, all county one year, track one year. Jillian plans to become a hairstylist and later plans to attend Marshall University for a career in the medical field. Alice Zhang. Alice is the daughter of Yancy Wu and Wu Zhang. She plays flute and has participated in concert band seven years, majorette four years, all county and all district four years. Marshall scores competition, third place on the piano, student council two years, quiz ball three years, beta club two years, math club three years, try in two years. Alice plans to attend the Ohio State University majoring in pharmaceutical science and healthcare track. Wow. We congratulate our seniors on their accomplishments and send with them our best wishes for a wonderful future. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fairland High School Marching Band, class of 2019. And we're back. We may start off the second half here at Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium, for home of the Fairland Dragons. Your score is Fairland Dragons 28. Cold Grove won at seven. At the end of the first half, there was a uh, late penalty flag, Charlie, some type of unsportsmanlike conduct called upon Cold Grove. So the Dragons will be kicking off on the other side of the 50 on the 45 yard line to open up the second half. Alec Bruce set the kick. Harmon and Sites back deep for the Hornets. Be interested to see if. if Bruce kicks it or just a little little pooch like he, like he's done earlier in the game. You kick it. Mm -hmm. Harmon kisses it around his eight yard line. Good block on the top side. Looks like he gets brought out of bounds by Tevin Taylor, number 21 of the Fairland Dragons. 
Hornets will take over first and 10 on round the 32, 33 yard line. Be interested to see what uh, defensive adjustments the uh, Dragons have made. It looks like they made a little tweak there after the Coldgrove scoring drive. Went back to more of a four. Now it looks like they're going right into the five. Nope. Stay with up the middle. First down and 10 plays. Going to pick about three yards. Going to be second down and seven for the Hornets. I'd like to congratulate the 26 seniors on the Fairland High School band for their accomplishments this year. For their senior night, 26 seniors on that band. It's a high number. A lot of participation. Hand off the sights. Up to six holes. Smith there by a group of Freeland Dragons. It's going to be third down and about six for the Hornets. Third down and five. I don't know. Three yards, Avery's up third down four. Twins to the top side, single wide right. Shotgun formation by Harmon. 5-2 formation by the Dragons. And the snap, back to pass. Looks like it's going to be complete. Nope, no good. Incomplete. Incomplete, going to be fourth down and four, five for the Hornets. Decision time for Coach already this early in the second half. I don't. He's contemplating his uh, choice here. I don't know why you'd think, even think about it. I think we're going for it. Huh. I think it's a pretty simple decision on my half. First possession, you kick it. But. Now they may have Goldberg one of those decided little. decided to go for it on fourth and four. Snap. Mm. Back to pass. Shotgun, he aims, he's open, and he catches it. Good catch. Tackled by McFarland and West. Pick up about 20 yards. Be first down and 10 for the Hornets around the 36, 37-yard line on the Fairland Dragons. It's a gutsy call. Gutsy call, big play. Worked out for him. Keep that momentum in their favor. They need that momentum to start the second half here. And off the sights, he has a lane. He's going to pick up some good yardage, pick up about 12 yards again. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets around the 24, 25 yard line of the Dragons. Boom, boom, back to back, 12 to 14 yard pickups, Charlie. And the Hornets moving right down the field to start the second half. Sykes up to five hole. He's going to have some pickup of maybe two on the play. Second about eight. Rankin and Riley Kazee in on that tackle. Or Seth McClain, I should say, excuse me. Uh, Seth McClain and Riley Kazee in on the tackle for the Dragons. Second and seven for the Hornets. You got Stapleton Sykes in the backfield. Back to pass, man's open, gonna be incomplete. Third down and seven for the Hornets. <coughs> Looks like he was trying to hit music over there in the flat. Brings up third and seven for the Hornets. Harmon on the keeper. Go. Nice little jump and leap. There it is. Fairland's begging for a flag on that. That's illegal in high school to jump players. So we'll see what that's going to turn up to be. 
that the referees talk about it here. That was still an athletic move by Harmon. Yes, it was. That was a very athletic move. Legal or not legal. That was a gamer move right there, man. It's, that's, that's tough because it's almost instinctive for some of these kids, right? So, I don't know. Now, what, what was they referred to that hurdling? Is that what? I think he said hurdling on the PA. That's me, you're not allowed to do it. Looks like they got a second penalty to go on top of the first one. So, when you're sitting there going to have it a first down and 10 possibility or awful close to it, now you're going to go back to third down and about 30. And when you're down 28 to 7, that's not a position you want to find yourself in. The yard marker's off by about four yards. <laughs> there, he found it. He just I had don't know who the second penalty was on, but the first penalty was the uh, leap jump by Nate Harmon. 30 yards and penalty brings us third down and 30 for the Hornets. It's a tough break for the Hornets, but we got third down and 30. I don't know if there's a play in the playbook for that. Brumfield on chase, and he gets him. Brings him down. That'll be a 12-yard loss for the Hornets. The freshman on the big sack, J.D. Brumfield. Be fourth down and 42. Is there a play for that? Mm, I don't believe so. I think I believe the play for that is called punt. Uh, yes. And the Hornets only have 10 men on the field. They only have 10 on the field, rushing one on. Going to bounce around the 28-yard line for the Dragons take over first and 10 on their own 28. Pun of about 30 yards. Eight minutes and 33 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Dragons senior quarterback Joe Landau trots onto the field to lead his team to start the second half on offense. 28 points in the first half. It's a lot of points to put up. Let's see if they can duplicate that here in a second. They did a lot of the damage on the ground, Charlie. Yeah, they did. This is this is right here is really, in my mind, is a game drive. Well, it looks like we got a hold. Michael Stitt for gain about 12. We got a flag down. It's probably going to be in the uh, offensive holding criteria area. There it is. Ten-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 20 for the Dragons. If the Dragons can get down the field, score on this possession, it's going to take the air completely out of the sails I agree with uh, of Cole Grove. But they're set back 10 extra yards, so it's going to be a little bit tougher to get down the field when it's first down and 20. And they're on their own 20. Another little yellow laundry on the field. Looks like we're going to have a little early movement on the green team. So after Colgrove gives Farrellon 30 yards in penalties, we're going to turn around and give him 15 right back. And we're going to be first down in 25 from around the 15, 14-yard line. Not really where you want to start your first drive of the second half. Yeah, not behind the sticks that much. But you don't have to get it all in one play. Try to get eight, ten that back at a, at a time. That's the goal here in this play, I would say. Can't get it all back in one, it's awful hard to. Shotgun snap to Lambiot. Low inside screen to Hunt. He's going to have a little bit of room. Get outside. He didn't get outside, but he still gets about mm, ten yards, nine yards, ten yards. So there's your nine to ten yards you're looking for on first down. We've got a little cramp issue for Hunt. 
timeout on the field timeout. for injury. With 7.51 left to play here in the third quarter, Hunt gets up and limps off the field. He looks like he's going to be okay. A little cramp issue. Go stretch a little bit. Riverside Physical Therapy coming out on the field to check on him. Dragons break the huddle. And off the stick. Nope, maybe out keeps it. Rolls to his left. In the middle to Sauer. It's going to pick up about another 10 yards we were talking about. Maybe eight yards. It's going to bring up a third down and about a more manageable eight. Charlie, when you're at first and 25 and you get down to third and eight, I think that's pretty successful. I believe it is. I believe it is. And I, I think they probably have that eight-yard play. Now see if they can convert this to a first down. Showing blitz. Nope. Backing off. Kenny lining up there to sneak in the back foot on the blitz. Snap. Maybe out back to pass. He finds his man wide open on the right flat. And Zeke Grammy, he's going to pick up about, about 18 yards on the play. It's going to be a first down for Fairland. 15 yard gain in the Dragon. First down. So they go from first and 25 and three plays to get the first down continue their first drive here in the second half. There wasn't anybody within 15 yards of Zeke. I don't know how you leave him that wide open on mm -hmm. I know he's not a primary target for him, but you got to have somebody man on man anyway. Yeah. Michael Stitt. Stitt Rough two-yard carry right there. Tackled by the interior line of the Cobra Hornets. Might have been led in there by Keeney. Trips left. No wide right. Just trips left on the single backfield. Got a tight end on the right side. There's that dual screen again. It's going to go to Hunt this time. He's got a lane. He's going to, he's going to, can he break? He gets struck out of bounds about the six yard line. So we first and goal from the six for the Fairland Dragons. Charlie, that was that same play we talked about in the first half where they had a screen set up on either side of the field and Lambie out to have his choice of who he wanted to throw it to. 45 yard gain and the Dragons first down. Looks like the uh, cramp, leg cramp's gone away. Like to go further and recognize is Brian DeVoe for making the sack of the game against South Point. Parkville Kroger making a donation in Brian's name to Fairland Athletics. Thank you, Parkville Kroger, for your support of the Dragons in our community. First and goal from the six-yard line for the Fairland Dragons. Lambie out, sit back in shotgun formation. Yep, we've got a flag, flag down. Stitt has, has a carry. We'll stick. pick up maybe Blind a yard, play. maybe two. I got a feeling there's some type of uh, formation issue there. Or, Something. Holding. Call holding. Mm. We're moving back 10 yards. It'll be first and goal from the 16. To be named the Tyler Haslam Law Office Football Player of the Week. And congratulations to McKenna Panel for being named the Ricky Shifko Athlete of the Week. So it's first and goal from the 18. 10 yard penalty backs the Dragons up to first and goal. The ball on the Hornet 18 yard line. Flat pass out here to Hunt. He's got a lane. Gets tripped up there after he picks up at about uh, close to nine Hunt. yards. Be around the 10 or 11 yard line. Be first and goal from there. Good open field tackle by Harmon. Harmon. Oh, yeah, right. good, good open field yeah. tackle. Yeah. Hunt's a little shifty. So that he's not an easy man to bring down one on one out in the open, open field. Dragons break the huddle, twins left, twins right. Second and goal from around the 11 yard line. A little 
Flat pass Sourty. He's going to throw it to West, but he couldn't get a hold of the football. He lost control of the football. It's going to be a pass, pass. He couldn't get a grip on it. Looks like they had the guy back there on West anyway. Wasn't going to go very far. And good defense by the Hornets. They were. Uh, they stayed home. Smart play. Third and goal from the 20. As we talked about third and 30. I don't know if you have a third and 20 play, Charles. You might just want to try to get your 10 yards and get in field goal range and attempt the field goal try. That freshman kicker has been pretty reliable this mm -hmm. year. Got man on man on top. Trips. Might be a little flat pass to Stitt here. No, nope. looky Going there. Looky Sowers. there. Nope. He caught that, didn't he? Oh, he, he did. did catch that. What a catch. Good ball, Sowers. Good catch, Raleigh. Way to battle, Dragons. Man, he fit that. Let me fit that into a tight spot. <laughs> With four minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Dragons looking to kick on the extra point. Alec Bruce, number 27, the freshman kicker. Wow, I can't believe he threaded that ball through there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it got knocked down for sure. The snap's up good. Hold, kick, good. Your score with four minutes and 12 seconds to go. Your Fairland Dragons 35, your Cold Grove Hornets 7. You're listening and watching Armstrong Sports Network. I like Bruce. Set the kick off for the Dragons. Sights and Harmon back deep for the Hornets. A little soft lobber. Sights going to pick it up. He doesn't get very far. Gets brought down around the 26-yard line. Warmed under by a bunch of dragons. Looks like Led by Blaine Cremines. Blaine Cremines. He's on the stop. So now I think you're going to see the dragons Hornets have forced the Cold Grove Hornets into doing something they don't like to do, which is play in that uh, high pass, low run option because they just ain't got enough time to slowly run the ball down the field. They got to get some chunk yards, chunk plays. It's going to be hard to get some points on the board quick. Hard to get back into the game, chipping away slowly. That's early movement on the Hornets. I don't think anybody Nike, wants to start first and 10. <laughs> You're right. It's, oh, sorry, it's been a while since we've had a first and 10 start, hasn't it? A lot of laundry. Getting a little sloppy here in the second half. The rain has subsided here in the second half. Sowers come in and give Lambiot a break. Harmon's going to keep it. Run the left side. He's going to get tackled by Cremines, I think. Yep, that's Cremines who brought him down. Looks like he might be injured on the play. Brought down by Cremines. Uh, looks like he might have rolled an ankle, Charlie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with three minutes and 53 seconds to go, injury timeout will also take it. Gonna throw back the throw, and he's humming it deep. The man's there, but it's incomplete. I think that's Stid over there on defense. Order nope, that's McFarland. Excuse me, that's number 11, McFarland on the defense. Set up third down and 15 for the Hornets. I think that's Corey Borders, number three quarterbacking. He's a junior for the Hornets. Sweep the sights around the right side. Good lead block there. And it's going to bring up fourth down and about seven or eight. Flag the on the field. We have flag on the field. Let's see what the laundry is about. That's in that illegal block territory. 
Yes, holding against the Hornets. Holding That'll push him back. It's like Harmon's jogging up and down the sidelines, working the ten yard penalty. Working the ankle, getting ready. He pro we're probably going to see him here in a few minutes. I sure hope so. I hate to see it. To the Ball player be injured, not be able to come back in. I don't care what color you wear. Pitch and catch. Pass is complete. Pick up about 15, 16 yards. Makes it a manageable fourth down and about three, Number maybe 12, four for the Hornets. Sights on the catch. We're stopping the clock. For an injury to Sights, it looks like he's limpy. Little gimpy coming up off the field. Turf. It's like he done an ankle thing too, Charlie. Maybe cramping a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get a good look and see what the looks like a little bit of ankle. Mm. That's two of the Hornets' primary weapons limping off the field on the same series. That's uh, that'll hurt your offensive production. But he's jog trying to jog it off here, just like Carmen is on the sideline. I think we'll see both of them back before the evening's over. It's good to see him jogging off. See that he's all right. So it's fourth down and four. I think this will uh, seal the deal if Fairland Dragons can get a hold here. Or see if the game's going to continue on if the Hornets convert fourth down. Stapleton. Hmm. There Good he choice. goes. There's the big man tumbling and bumbling for about 15 yards and a first down for the Hornets. <coughs> Stapleton the carry. First down, first down yard for the Hornets. I don't think the Dragons have a football player out on the field that's over 200 pounds right now. All their D linemen are the quick, versatile linemen. You got Ramey at defensive end. Right. You got Crameen's at defensive end. You got Defoe, 150 pound defensive tackle. They're working on their speed out there, try to get that pass rush going. And they're going to let him take those five and six yard rushes all the way down the field because uh -huh. that's going to run the clock out. Here comes Rankin. We'll you take a little bit of size back in there. There's your over 200 pounder. Seven mm -hmm. down three. Number 66, Jacob Rankin goes 290. Hornets yeah. have a second and three on their own on the Dragons 45. Hit on the tackle. Storms on carry. That's Austin Storms on carry. First down and 10 for the Hornets on the Dragons 40 yard line. With a minute 18, the clock running in the third quarter. Harmon's standing over on the sideline like he's like he's ready to, you know, he's ready to come back in the game. Just Stepping haven't up the middle. Just haven't seen him yet. Stableton ball carrier. Pick up about four, five yards. He's second down and five. <laughs> yeah, Harmon and Slights are both standing side by side over here by the coach, waiting to get back. Quarterback keeper around the end. Defoe's out there. And also for means loss of about five. It's gonna be third and ten from the 40-yard line. Loss of four brings up third down and nine. The only thing I can guess is Sites and Harmon aren't aren't hundred percent. That's the only reason why you wouldn't have them in the game. Right. That's, that's your two offensive leaders right there. I don't know why you wouldn't have them in the game if they're ready to go. Has to be what it is. Quick pass. Oh, caught. Pitch and catch. Good play. 
And there's the horn of the buzzer in the third quarter. But the Hornets are going to have a first down and 10 on the Dragon 21-yard line when we open the fourth quarter. With your score, Friendly Dragons 35, the Cold Grove Hornets 7. You're watching Armstrong Sports. Start here in the fourth quarter. Cold Grove Hornets holding the ball on the Fairland Dragons 21 yard line. Chesapeake 36, Rock Hill 13. Dragons in control of this ball game this evening. Handily at this point. Handily. Border set back deep, shotgun snap. Look it over to the coach, sideline, get the play call. Speed rush in for the Dragons. There's the foe. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a late hit on the Mullins, passer. looks like. Yeah, roughing the passer. Pass Is that on Kermeens? Um Yeah, it was yeah. gonna be on Kermeens. Yeah. That'll be 15 yards or half the distance. That'll be a first down for the Hornets. Should be first and goal. Gonna have the ball at about the seven yard line. First and goal for the Hornets. Borders took that hit, hopped right up, and he's ready to go again. I bet it's going to uh, number 30, Stapleton. Nope, a little quick pass. Too high. Second down and 10. Second down and goal, I'm sorry, from the seven yard line. You got four plays. You got number 30. He's not handing the ball for three, three, four times in a row. Seven oh, yards. Yeah. Okay. I'd like his chances to get seven yards in four plays. Four straight runs up the gut, especially with our speed rush guys in and not yeah. the size in, you know. But I'm not the one calling the plays. I'm up here doing the talking. He's going to pass again. A little quick screen out to number 10. <laughs> Uh, we got a, we got a flag. Going to have a targeting shot, perhaps, or something, or what? I don't know what that could be called on, but we'll see what it is. That was Storms on the catch. I think that it was, was Storms. Contact against the Dragons. That's going to be an automatic first down. It's going to be half distance closer to the goal. I think the referees are trying to get control before it gets out of control, which I, I don't have so. a problem with. Having some hard hits and little little cheap shot flags here and there. So we're trying to keep control of the game. I have no issue with that. Since the game is already out of control on the scoreboard, mm -hmm. they need to keep control on the field. So applaud them for that. We might see a dose of number 30 now. We're down here. Inside the five, I'd yeah. hope. He's set blown back, so. Oh, you got him. But he went nowhere. Kermeens and Rankin and Tier D line. Big stop. I don't think he picked up anything. I guess we weren't the only ones thinking 30 was going to get the ball. Oh, they're bringing the meat in. Yep. Timeout. Hornets. Third and goal from the three. Fourth and goal from the three, excuse me. I thought that uh, that last flag would be an automatic first. Is that not a personal foul? Maybe I'm mistaken. I thought they said personal foul, but it must not have been. So we're going to have fourth down and goal from the three yard line. So we're back. Fourth down and goal from the two yard line for the Crow Grove Hornets. Ten minutes and 13 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter. Correction, third and goal from the two. Yep. Okay, third they changed it back to third and goal from, to from the two. Little pop pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Pretty good pass defense there by Brennan West, number five for the Dragons. That'll bring up fourth down. Boys, I tell you what, 
you got Colgrove on the ropes when they're on the two and three yard line, yeah. and they got the big fullback, and they decide to do a little pop pass. Yeah. I would never have thought I would have seen that. We're going to have another timeout, but it's going to be on the green team. Timeout Dragons. Timeout Dragons. So 10 minutes and six seconds to play here on a big critical fourth down and goal play for the Hornets. Fairland takes a timeout to talk about it defensively, and what they're going to set up. We too will take a timeout here. We're back in fourth and goal. Here's the play of the night. For the Hornets to stay in this ball game, they need to convert this fourth down. We're in shotgun formation. Rolling to the right, a little flat pass, and that's an easy walk-in touchdown for the Hornets. Music. music on the reception, and that brings the score with 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter and awaiting the kick of the extra point for the Hornets. We got a home setback, kick the extra point for the Hornets. Snap good, hold, kick, block. Not sure who got their hand up. If somebody got their hand up on it. May have been Brumfield, number two for the Dragons. A little deflection. So with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, we got a Fairland Dragons score of 35, the Cold World Hornets, 13. You're watching Armstrong Sports. Dragons are planning an onside kick here, and it would be a smart move of the Hornets. They need the ball back as soon as possible. And there's the attempt, and they're letting it roll. Who's going to cover it? Looks like maybe West onside got on top of the ball covered. around the 38-yard line. You don't like to see the ball roll that long no. before someone picks it up. But it worked out okay for the Dragons. They're going to take over first and 10 on their own 36, 37, 38-yard line, somewhere in there. Dragons take over first and 10, the ball on their own 38-yard line. Charlie, I want to say a couple things before I do have an opportunity to forget, because I am very forgetful on things. But I would really like to... Uh, brag and thank Armstrong Sports for all their local network programming that they do for yes. these kids and all the hard practices that these kids uh, do on the football field and on the cheerleaders and the band and the hard work that they put on and Armstrong, their willingness to uh, be a part of the community and to show these kids on TV. Even though it's delayed, you know, it's pretty cool to see uh, your local high school team on TV. Mm -hmm. Michael Stick gets the ball carried. We're about to pick up a two, maybe three yards from the second down and seven for the Dragons. But getting back to Armstrong, you know, they've done this for a couple of years now. And uh, uh, man, the main man Doug, you know, he's the main, main man as far as we're concerned that has a lot to do with this. And we really appreciate you, Doug, and all your hard work that you do to make this uh, a community event here for us at Fairland. Thanks again. I know a lot of the... A lot of folks enjoy enjoy watching the rebroadcast to watch the players. I'm pretty sure it's not to listen to us. Yet. You got that right. I bet they I bet, it wouldn't surprise me if some of them are on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Stid on the carry. There's a block in the back by Sowers. That'll push the Dragons back 10 yards from the spot. It's going to be second down and about 13. Personal foul, track back is the Dragons. Hmm. Ah, that may be 15, so that's going to be second down and 18 instead of 13. <laughs> Dragons are set up second down and 15. Thanks, Charlie. Yep. Maybe I'll set the pass. He's going to throw one up to West. Up for grabs and complete. Third down and 16. Whoa, what do we play got here? 
on pass interference on the offense. Man, that was a late flag. Pass interference against the Dragons. I don't know if you had to think about it for a while before he threw it or yeah. what. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit late, but nevertheless, guess what? It counts. Yep. It's 15 yeah. yards back for yeah. the Dragons. So they'll have to play a second down. We're getting close to that 42 to go, like the Hornets had not too long ago. We've got 10, second 20, 30 about 32. So we're getting close to that 42 mark. I don't know if you got a play call for a second and 32, but we'll see. Okay. Dragons are going to take a timeout time before the snap. So with eight minutes and 36 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter, we'll take time out for the Western Armstrong. Dragons break the huddle. Third down and six down and 30. Lambiot shotgun. He's looking deep. He's got some room. He's got a hunt. He's going to run it. And he's going to tiptoe out of bounds. Pick up about five yards, six maybe. It's going to be third down and 25. <laughs> trying to run off as much clock as he could before he fell over the line. <laughs> Tippy toes. So you can look tall. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, third down and 25. I, I can feel a draw play right here, Charles. Try yeah. to run a little bit of clock. Hey, probably yeah. take a chance to run. I thought it real deep. Have an interception. Just yeah. take care of the ball here. Run some clock. PA man says inside screen. We'll see. Here's the inside screen. He's watched this a time or two. Uh, Lambiot going to hang on to it. He's got room to run. Oh, uh, what's this flag for? Oh, there's a taunting probably behind that. Multiple flags on the play. Got a couple flags down. A couple of different areas of the field, so we'll have to get all this straightened out. We've got a dragon limping up here on the side. Can't tell who it is. Holding his dragon's declined. We've got a holding over here, it's declined. Personal foul. Personal foul, head to head contact against the dragons. The personal foul against the dragons also, so that'll back him up, I think, after the initial Gain, then they'll back him up 15 since they declined the holding. So it'll be fourth down and 30 after they mark off the next 15 yards. There we go. Umpire bring the ball to the head referee. Charlie, I promise you. It's fourth and 42. Both teams <laughs> fourth and 42 this game. Uh, I think they're going to call the same play that Cole Grove ran whenever they had their fourth and 42. I believe they are. I believe, I believe that would be called punt. Yes, <laughs> punt. Now, what you want to do here if you're failing, you just want to get the punt off. It don't matter mm -hmm. if it goes 20 yards, 50 yards. You just don't want to get mm -hmm. a block here. Just get it off and make Cole Grove have to drive a little bit of a distance and not just get a real quick score. So what are we doing here? Have declined the penalties. I guess if they didn't decline the penalty, it would have been third down. So they decided to decline the penalty. It's going to bring the ball all the way back up to the 32-yard line, perhaps? I'm, I'm hoping whoever's running the yardage marker wore his comfortable shoes because well, he's doing right a lot now, of walking. That's a 25-yard penalty that they chose not to take just so Franklin couldn't run one play. I, I, that's a lot of yards you give up just for one play, but, hey, that's why, again, I'm up here on the mic and not down <laughs> on the field with the headset on, calling the calls, calling the shots. Bad snap. Lambiot gets the punt off anyway. Good go. Starting to lose control of the game here a little bit. Officials. 
Well, 23 thought he called fair catch. So did all the Maryland players. And the whistle didn't get blown. But nobody so. was blowing the whistle. And Punt is down on the 27 yard line. Hornets will take over first and 10. It'll be first and 10 either way for the Hornets around the 28, 29 yard line of their own. With a score of 35 to 13 with 7.55 to play here in the fourth quarter. All things considered, though. Well, what the Dragons have going on punt. right now, their defense is loaded yeah. because they have 12 on the field. Mm -hmm. That makes it a lot easier to play defense when you have 12 on the field. I think they have 12 on the field. Yeah, we got 12 on the field. Yep. So that makes it nice. You can play good defense when you have 12 on the field compared to 11. You're going to have to get somebody off the field. Surely sooner or later they'll figure it out that they got 12 on the field. Maybe it's uh, maybe we're thinking that since the fullback weighs so much, we get to Look have an this. extra guy. Yeah. Have we figured it out yet? They have 12. Nope, there we go. We figured it out. Okay. Just hurry up and get off the field. Zeke Ramey ran off the field real quick. Hand off up the middle. Ball Not going to get any yards on that one, I don't think. It'll be second down and 10 from the 28-yard line. That was tackled in there by Caleb Mullins, number 52 for the Dragons. Starting to wonder if, if here at some point we might start seeing some additional substitutions by the Dragons. Get some of them secondary players, yep. second tier players third in, one, practice hard all week long, deserve a little maybe a little playing time. Yeah. We got third down and ten probably here for the Dragons. Rankin and Kazee on the tackle on that play, it looks like. Maybe with Kermeans as well. No game brings up third down and ten for the Hornets. <clears throat> Pitch and catch by the Cogrove Hornets. Looks number like two, number two, Evan Holmes, with a pickup of about 25 yards. Taken by Joel Lambiot. First down and 10 for the Hornets on the Dragons' 48-yard line with 6.30 to play. That's going to be picked off by Joel Lambiot. Slides down safely, smart move, late flag. Slides down the ball around the 33-yard line. We've got a flag down. We're going to see what that's all about. Probably going to get pass interference. I'm not real sure that it was away from where the ball sure was coming down. That other player, they were just, I didn't really see much. Pass interference. The holding call against the Dragons after the interception has been declined. But I hate to tell them, if there's pass interference, there can't be a holding call nope. because the, inter the uh, interception doesn't come into play. No. So. If we continue to work things out here, we'll figure out what's going on. So the penalty is going to be from the marker. There we go. 15 yards from the 48-yard line. So mm -hmm. she'll put it down around the 33. It'll be first and 10 for the Hornets. Fifteen-yard penalty against the Dragons gives the Hornets the ball. First and ten on the Dragon 37-yard line. Throwing up deep. Pass incomplete. Coverage by Brennan West. The ball was thrown to Mr. Holmes again. Good ball, just 
We have flag down again. I think we waved that flag off, maybe. I guess not. But it doesn't look like we're going to see Harmon again tonight. No, it looks like he's out. Sites hasn't been back on the field either. Hand up off the middle. Stapleton, Stapleton doesn't pick up anything. Maybe even lost a yard. The third down and 11. As the clock continues to run with 5.50 to play here in the fourth quarter. Hunter Brewer running on the field yep. for the Dragons. Looking to get see a little him. bit of fresh legs in there yep. on the pass rush, maybe. He's getting held. Pass complete to Keeney. Looks like Keeney's going to pick up about 25 yards on the play. It's going to be first down for the Hornets and go from the 10 yard line, nine yard line. Hornets set up first and goal. We have a flag on the play after the incomplete pass. Flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be holding against the Dragons. It's going to move the ball half the distance to the goal. And it's going to be a first oh, down. <laughs> I don't think the Dragon fans are real happy right now. <laughs> well, we've got five minutes left to play in a 35 to 13 ball game. The referees are throwing flags on every other play. We just need to get through the ball game here. I don't think it's going to change the final outcome of the game. And that ball is picked off by number three, Michael Stitt. He falls down at the 10-yard line where the Dragons will take over first and 10 from their own 10. Now see if the Dragons can run off the rest of this clock. I can spit. That was yeah. played you. Yeah, I believe it was Stick. <clears throat> oh, is that 12 right down here on the bottom on the corner? Uh, yeah, I believe yep. it is. So we got uh, Sykes back in the game at corner. Stitt carry picks up about four yards. Be second down and five for the Dragons. These officials got me skittish. Every time there's a bug that keeps flying by our window here, and every time I see it fly by, I think it's a flag <laughs> flying. I like to know how many penalties have been thrown this second <laughs> half, especially here just in the fourth quarter. It's been a lot. It really disrupts the flow of the game. Michael Stitt with the carry. He's going to pick up 15 yards, and it's going to be enough for a Dragon first down. Clock will continue to run after the chains are set. Stitt jogging off the field, going to get a breather with Brumfield coming in to replace him. Coach Cunningham will be satisfied to let every second of the play clock continue to run before he hikes the ball. Looks like Borders out here with the – Playing back here in the safety, and he's playing quarterback. Um, dinged up his elbow a little bit on his throwing arm. We'll have to see if the uh, see if the uh, Hornets get the ball back. If that affects his ability to throw the ball. That was number two, J.D. Brumfield on the carry, pick up of nine yards on first down. It'll make it a second down and one for the Dragons. Tevin Taylor entering the ball game. We have a timeout here. Whistle calling time. 
Time out, Colgrove. We're going to have a measurement. Time out for a measurement. I mean, we got a bad angle up here, but for me, it didn't look like look they like they made the first down. Mm, we can't see it from here. The fish was in the way. We'll have to wait for the uh, motion. It looks like it's going to be. Ooh, my gosh! It must be so close. They can't tell yet. He's going to pull out his driver's license and see if he can slide I've it down. I've seen him there. do it, Charlie. Yeah, He's going to go. give it a first down for the Dragons. So that's a pickup of 10 yards for Brumfield. It'll be a first and 10 from the 39-yard line. Hand off to Taylor. He's going to lose about five yards on the play. Devin Taylor, the ball carrier. Second down and 14 for the Dragons. Four yard loss on the play brings up second down 14. Brumfield busting through the hole. Picks up about 13 yards on the carry. And third down and two for the Dragons. That's a run with authority right there by the freshman. Got in the middle of all that junk, just kept those legs moving. Popped right out the other side. Sure did. I have a feeling we're going to see Brumfield again here, maybe. That's your call, and that's the first down. Run about four yards. That'll be a first and ten for the Dragons. On the Cold Grove side of the football field, around the 48-yard line with a minute 30 to go. I think the Dragons will just take knees from here on out if they so choose. Close out the ball game. And this will bring the Fairland Dragons record to five and four on the year, three and three in OVC. And with the last game against that team down the river, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It starts with a C and ends with an E. We can't say their name or the color. Never have, never will. Let me out with the shotgun snap. Takes the knee. That'll be a big game for the Fairland Dragons. If they can pull out that win, they still have a slight chance to make the playoffs this year. Yep, yep. So big victory tonight for the Fairland Dragons over the Cold Grove Hornets. Fairland sidelines erupts in, in excitement on senior night. It's a good way to end senior night on the home field with a big victory. It'll be the Fairland Dragons 35, the Colgrove Hornets 13. Thank you so much for watching Armstrong Sports. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time.